Hey guys, Saeed here. Welcome to Psychology of Spirituality. Today we're going to be speaking about the importance of stable two-parent households on adolescent development. Before I begin, I just want to shout out my website. I've been working on it extensively these past couple of months. Uh, There's a free newsletter that I'm sending out, a bunch of free resources. You can sign up on the front page. I began doing this literature review for my dissertation because of its correlation with religiosity uh, and it happened to coincide with this video on a show with uh, Jon Stewart in which there was this contentious conversation on the importance of promoting two-parent households in the black community. We can watch a clip right here. I think education is crucial. I think figuring out a way to help black kids have a stable family. The truth is, yes. it's two, if you have a I, two I did. parent married home, you're going to say something better. to you, Andrew. You really are. I didn't grow up in a stable family. I grew up in a single parent family. Well, did you... And so, I'm just telling you, you know, the data. Well, the the data honest... is that 30% of African Americans don't have this. It's the biggest factor in getting people into college and succeeding in life. And if you ignore it, we're going to let these black kids down. No, I think and, you know, even though we hear the groaning of the audience, this is a pretty uncontroversial topic in the developmental sciences. Youth who grow up in non-two-parent households, or even youth who grow up in dysfunctional two-parent households, are at risk for a variety of issues, including depression. Here's one article that I'm linking in the description. Uh, you can see some of the comments from the article here. This is a comprehensive comprehensive cross-sectional survey on about 100,000 adolescents from 12 to 17, finding that those from single mother households are significantly more at risk for depression regardless of race. It says in the article, compared with the two parent households, single mother households are generally less well off financially, more likely to experience social stress, and more vulnerable to maternal depression and anxiety. Consequently, adolescents may experience more adjustment difficulties, such as academic problems and social deficits, and thereby more likely to have depression. As always, for those joining the channel for the first time, I also include lots of media representations, you know, paintings, art, film, TV shows, to bridge these scientific findings because These depictions are an amalgamation of the social ideals, the collective psychological ideals projected that we celebrate and that we enjoy. I'm thinking back to all of the great shows that I used to watch, right? The Bernie Mac show, right? Everybody Hates Chris, right? Family Matters, right? That title is so appropriate here, right? Full House. Right, even something like Modern Family, right, which came uh, a little bit later down the line, right. So even going far back, Leave It to Beaver, the Brady Br- the Brady Bunch, right. And all of these shows have that built within the core of the nexus of the their their show, right. That stable two parent household that, despite all the dysfunctions that happen through the course of 10, 12, 15 seasons, right. Oh, pops, I never meant to put you in danger. I swear. I know that, son. I don't blame you, but it's quite a shock to find out your son's a superhero. That nucleus of a supportive, loving family, right, is why we consider these shows to be classics, right? And here's a great clip from the Fresh Prince, Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, one of the greatest shows of all time. Childhood classic for me, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the clip afterwards. <laughs> now, somebody in this house needs to talk about sex. And, and it ain't one of us. But that only leaves... Oh, God, tell me it's Jeffrey. <laughs> I think it's our not-so-little girl. Okay, kids, your father and I need to talk alone. Hey, look, Uncle Phil, now, just remember that sex is as natural as breathing. And I'm going to hold my breath till I'm married. (laughs) And as always, right, I show these clips, they give us a mechanism of action. 
by which these psychological variables that we speak about in a very abstract manner are relatable to us, right? In this sense, how a stable and structured family unit can lead to pro-social development. And this article here highlights that youth living in a single parent household are significantly at risk to engage in early sexual behaviors, especially amongst those with a father absent for a significant portion of time. And yes, it's also an uncontroversial point that teenagers engaging in early sexual behaviors is dangerous and there are thousands of programs nationwide built into schools and communities to prevent this behavior because of its association with poor mental and emotional health. I'm not saying that all those programs are across the board having the impact of decreasing early sexual behaviors and increasing sexual literacy, sexual education, right? Many states that have abstinent only programs, for example, end up having the counterintuitive effect, they end up actually having more teenage pregnancies, STDs. And as it says in the article, increasing parental income, two-parent households, and at least one parent with a bachelor's degree significantly reduce the likelihood of teens engaging in sexual intercourse. These findings are consistent with previous studies and indicate that family structure, income, and parental education are related to adolescent and uh, and adolescent sexual activity and that living in stable households and environments may be conducive to delaying sexual intercourse. Look, Hillary, Derek and I have been spending a lot of time together and we really care about each other. And last night, the subject came up about, um, um, sex. Oh. Oh, did you? No, no, (laughs) no. (laughs) But I've been thinking about it and I I just want to know how you know if... I can just tell you that for me, Lawrence and I really loved each other. And we both felt that we were able to make a responsible decision. We decided that the time was right. That Fresh Prince clip right there highlights just that a strong family unit is comprised of healthy relationships built on social reciprocity. And in spite of the usual dysfunctions of being in any family... Ashley, the younger sister, she's starting to explore her sexuality. And because she has that infrastructure, that communication, that love of being in that family, she has significantly less chances of getting pregnant early, uh, contacting an STD, engaging in multiple sexual relationships. That in turn reduces the likelihood of Ashley, right, who we're using as an example here as, you know, a millions of other adolescent females, right, reduces her likelihood to have depression, to engage in other delinquency behaviors such as drug usage, alcohol usage, dropping out of school, you know, fighting uh, interpersonal conflicts and things like that, which subsequently predicts lower quality of life when she's an adult, right? So, I was so sure looking like this would make me popular. <laughs> Guys want a girl who, who's sweet and, and kind and smart, and just like you. Kenny wanted the girl with back. There are still some guys that appreciate quality, you know? And, and you're quality. You don't got to do all this. Just work on being you. I'm, I'm telling you, the, the right guy will come along, I promise you. Have your people call my people. We'll do lunch. (laughs) Give mama a kiss, baby. The importance of two-parent households is integral here to so many different variables, right? And we may may be asking ourselves, okay, but why? Why are these youth at such a disadvantage, right? There are too many. Thousands of research articles, each looking at different variables. So I want to highlight this specific article Uh, Because I used to work at a sleep and emotions lab when I was an undergraduate. And shout out to my interview here with a clinical psychology student, Rogelio, who speaks about the importance of sleep. This study looked at sleep issues in single parent households, finding that black adolescents who were from single parent households had the poorest SE or sleep efficiency. There was also a significant bivariate association between sleep disturbances and subsequent depression tying back to that 
previous study. So that means that single parent households tend to be less well off financially, which means poor, poor neighborhood quality and less structured time because the mother is working two or three jobs. These two are correlated with reduced sleep efficiency, which is then tied with poor academic performance and social emotional defi deficits, including at risk for dropout, right? So it gives us some trajectory, some mechanism by which children, young people living in single parent households have a disadvantage going forward, right? The sad truth is that you're gonna be faced with a lot of tough decisions in your life. And not just about drinking either, about about drugs and about sex and who knows what. I just wish you could grow up in a world where you can enjoy being a kid, but I'm sorry, pal, it's not the way it is. So, I hope that you'll use the same good judgment that you used tonight. Because I never want to see you get hurt. But I love you so much. Love you too, Uncle Jesse. Thank you. And I just want to caveat what I'm saying. Uh, when I say poor neighborhood quality, right, I don't want to get trapped in this cycle of advocating for materialistic affordances as the end all solution to all of our psychological problems, right? Neighborhood quality doesn't necessarily mean just like having nice things in one's neighborhood, right? Living in some substandard gated suburban community, right? Neighborhood quality also means a sense of solidarity with where you live, a sense of unity, the relationships that you have with the people who live in your community, right? This is an article which looked at residential stability and sources of social support in African-American neighborhoods, such as neighborhood cohesion. And these were found to be strong protective factors. And we see this in so many great films, right? Do the Right Thing is one of my favorite films, for example. And it parallels a lot of my upbringing, having grown up in Queens, New York. It may be a poor or a working class neighborhood, but there is a sense of unity and identity which goes so much further than living in an isolated suburban environment, right? And subjectively speaking, I think this issue gets very contentious because we know that many of these single parents work tirelessly to support their children. I want to give a shout out to Kramer vs. Kramer, a movie that came out like in the 1970s with Dustin Hoffman, which it had a huge cultural impact because it showed the role of many single fathers as well, right? So when we say single parents, we may just think about single mothers. The majority of single parent households tend to be single mothers, but there are single father households also. I don't understand. Well, the problem is, is that your mommy and I both want you to live with us, see? So that's why we decided to go see this man who, who I told you is the judge. And, and we let him decide because he's very wise and experienced about these things. See, we talked to him for a few days, and, and after that, we asked him what he thought. You know what he said? He agreed with mommy. He thought it would be a terrific idea if, if you move in with her and live there from now on. And I'm really lucky because I get to have dinner with you once a week. And two times a month, we spend the weekends together. It's going to be okay. <laughs> really. I don't like it anymore. What do you mean if you don't like it? You're going to have a great time with mommy. Really, she loves you so much. 